let's do a let's do an example question here. Um, this is like a you call this like a tetherball question, or you call it like a uh, a swing ride at the carnival type question. But here's the general idea behind this question. So follow along because these are uh, these tend to be difficult, not necessarily difficult, but you have to have your thinking correct when you're solving one like this. So what we'll say, the particular question we're going to work on, we'll use a tether ball as an example. Okay, so here's a rough estimation of this or a rough representation of this. We'll call this, oop, we'll call this the, the tether ball question. A classic physics question. Okay, and you might be just given a picture and you might be given just an angle here. So you see a tether ball on an angle swinging round and round and round and round. Okay, you might get asked um, some questions like, um, calculate the centripetal force acting. Uh, on the ball, if you have to be given a mass, if the mass in this case is 120 grams, okay, that's one type of question you might be given. Or it's possible to be given a question without knowing the mass. So this would be a secondary question. You might say something like, um, um, if call it L. L equals um, 57 centimeters. And actually, you need that for this one as well. Let me put that in. L equals 57 centimeters. If L equals 57 centimeters, um, find the period and frequency. We'll even add this. And the frequency in RPMs. So we can convert between all of these. We just need to find one and we can convert to the others um, of the ball. Okay, so there's the type of question you might get um, given this. So to start this off, um, let's draw a free body diagram and think about what's going on. Okay, so this is going around and around and around. Okay, and there's kind of like an interplay between um, forces here, right? So one force that you're going to have um, is gravity, right? That's going to go down like this. Okay, so we'll put that on. And of course, that's going to be equal to mg, whatever the mass of the ball times mg, and it points straight down at all times. Okay, um, and then you're also going to have to have uh, a centripetal force acting on this ball as well. So that's going to always point back towards the pole. Okay, Fc. Okay, and just going to get this out of the way. You're also going to have to have um, essentially counter forces to this, right? And you're going to have to supply this in some way. So here's the question. First of all, what supplies the centripetal force to keep the tether ball going around and around and around? What supplies the centripetal force? Yes. Okay. So there's a tension in this rope, right? Uh, but we would consider that tension to be pointing like in this direction. Okay? So what is it about this that makes this go? Yes. Uh, I'm going to say that it is the component of tension, right? The component of tension in the X plane. Okay? So we could say then that the centripetal force is going to be supplied by whatever that tension is, Ft um, times the sine of theta. Okay, and then the other thing is, well, what's counteracting gravity? Well, equal and opposite to gravity is the y component of tension. So Ft uh, cos theta should be equal to Fg, all right? So this plus this, okay, you get rid of those cancel out, all right, those cancel out. So there's no acceleration in the vertical plane. And then you have some component of this tension aiming inward, and that provides the centripetal force to keep this thing moving in a circle, okay? So far, so good, makes sense. Okay then, so 
you are going to be given theta. To solve this problem, you need to know what theta is. So we're going to mark it at um, 30 degrees. So theta is equal to 30 degrees. That's necessary information, okay? You have to know what theta is, otherwise, right, it could be anything. So we're going to set theta equal to 30, okay? And let's do one first. Let's do number one. Let's solve problem one first, okay? One. Find FC. Well, to find FC, we need to know what FT is, right? We need to find what FT is. But we can't directly measure FT with the information that we're given. However, what we can do is we can find FG. We know that FG is equal to FT times the cosine of theta, right? We defined it up there. Um, so we know that, then we should be able to work out what FC is, correct? But we're going to skip over finding FT because we also know this. We know that the tangent of theta should be equal to FC opposite over adjacent, right? FC over FT cos theta. Or FC over FG. And what we're actually trying to find is this, right? We want to find that value. Okay, so let's rearrange the formula, see if we can find it. Centripetal force should be equal to FG times the tan of theta. Does that make sense? Okay. So FG is mg, mg tan theta. So we said I think it was 57 grams. Oh, my bad. 57 centimeters. Right. Um, times G times the tan of 30 degrees. So what is that going to give us? So for 120 grams, I get something like 0 0.68 newtons. Okay, um, now let's move over. Let's move over to the second part. Uh, find. Uh, let's say find the frequency in this situation. Okay, let's find the frequency. So just uh, let's grab that picture and bring it down. Okay, and let's say this is the uh, let's say this is the information that we're given. Um, we know that this is 57 centimeters in length, so L equals 57 centimeters. And actually, we'll say we're not given the weight of this object because interestingly, we'll find that the actual mass of this object doesn't matter. So find F if L equals 57 centimeters and theta equals 30 degrees. So you might be given a problem like that. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing this? Okay, so going back to sort of what we were talking about before here, let's just redefine these things in terms of FT again. So we said that FC should be equal to FT sine theta, and FG should be equal to um, FT cos theta, right? That's the Y component of FT, and that's the X component of FT. Okay. Um, or, or if you want to figure out what FT is, um, FT could be just FG over cos of theta. Okay. And then we should be able to do a little substituting here. So, so we don't know what FT is, but we do we do maybe know what MG is. Okay, we could say this. The centripetal force is equal to FG over cos theta times uh, sine theta. So then we could we could rewrite this, we could rewrite this then as this, right? Um, we could say centripetal force should be equal to um, Fg sine theta 
divided by cos theta. Okay, so uh, we're going to mine our trig identities, and we're going to find that tan theta is actually equal to sine theta over cos theta. So now we've made this. The centripetal force should be equal to Fg tan theta. Okay. So we also know that Fg is mg. So Fc equals mg tan theta. Nice one. Now we also have some other definitions of what centripetal force is, right? We know that Fc is equal to mv squared over r, but also that it's equal to m or pi squared r all over t squared. So if we want to deal with this in terms of period, we can substitute in this whole thing for Fc. So let's see what we get. Substituting in m or pi squared r over t squared that makes it equal to mg tan theta. I think we might be able to solve this now. So first thing, m's cross off both sides. Okay. And let's divide a g off. We'll get this. Tan theta is 4 pi squared r over g t squared. Okay. And, oh wait, sorry. That's not what we want. My bad. We want to isolate t. I got carried away. Actually, you know what? Let's just define a useful formula first. Okay. So theta should be equal to, okay, theta should be equal to the inverse tan of 4 pi squared r over g t squared. Okay. Now the last thing, let's say we want to figure out what theta will be. Okay. So see, we want to figure out what theta will be based on the length of the rope, okay? So can we do that? We're almost there, okay? So if we look back up here, okay, the radius that we're talking about, right, is this. The radius of the ball around the pole, that's what the centripetal force is acting on. And that can be found as L sine theta, L sine theta. So let's go back to this formula. We'll get to the answer in a minute here, but let's go back to this formula and say this. Theta equals tan negative 1 for pi squared L, uh-oh, sine came back, but that's okay. L sine theta over GT squared. So we've got two thetas. That's not good, but watch what we can do. We should be able to, we should be able to math our way out of this. Let's tan both sides again, okay? Probably should have done this earlier, but whatever. It's a little bit messy. Um, L sine theta over gt squared. Okay. So now what if we divide a sine theta off this side? Then we have this. Tan theta over sine theta is equal to 4 pi squared L over gt squared. Okay. Now what? Here, check this out. So we just we just looked and we saw this. This is true, right? Tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta, right? Um, or or we could say that cos theta is equal to sine theta over tan theta. We don't have that. We have the inverse of that. But what if we just flip everything over? We do that, right? So flip that side, flip the left side, flip the right side. Well, that's cos theta. Okay, then inverse cos it. Okay. So that's in terms of period. Could we put it in terms of frequency? So basically what this is telling us here, right, is, um, 
you know, um, well, we know this, right? Cos of what equals 90? Cos of 0, oops, cos of 0 equals 90 degrees, right? Cos of 0 equals 90 degrees. Um, so in other words, what's that? Sorry, cos of 1 equals 90. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, cos negative 1 of 0 equals 90. My mistake. So in other words, as whatever is in here approaches 0, right? As whatever's in here approaches 0, theta um, approaches 90 degrees, OK? So what that means then is that as t gets smaller, as the period gets smaller, which happens when the frequency gets higher, the angle goes up. Or if period is set and the L, the length, gets larger, theta gets larger. Okay. So if you're thinking of the ride here, okay, and let's say the frequency or the period is set, has some given RPM value, if I'm longer, I'll have a higher angle, basically. Okay. So now to get back to our um, overall value here, what we were trying to find is we we're actually trying to find um, t out of all of this. Okay. Let's try to pull t out of this. So we want to isolate for t. Okay. Um, so t should look like this. t should be equal to the root, the root of cos of theta times 4 pi squared l um, over g. Okay. So in this case, we've got the cos of 30 degrees times 4 pi squared. Um, the length was 0 0.5. 5, 7 meters, and g is our normal value, 9.81 meters per second squared, and we want to root the whole thing. And this should give us the um, period of revolution, and then we can find frequency after that. So I get t equals 1.4 seconds. Okay, so t equals 1.4 seconds. So that means our frequency should be equal to... Oh, 0.71. Okay, done. Okay, so let's figure out um, what this is going to be in revolutions per minute, because I think that's what the uh, question actually said at the end was like, find in RPM. So what we should say is we have 0 0.71 rotations every second. And we want to go um, times 60 seconds every minute. So this should give us ripums, right? So times 60, you get like 43. Okay. There we go. Done.